Good morning. I'd like to introduce our next um, guest speaker, Congressman Davis Scott. Davis Scott is a congressman of the 13th Congressional District, which, he com which is comprised of Douglas County and parts of Cobb, Clayton, Fayette, Fulton, and Henry Counties. Chairman Scott was recently named the chairman of the House of Agriculture Committee and serves on the subcommittees for G general farm commodities, risk management, as well as livestock, dairy, and poultry. He also is a prominent member of the Financial Service Committee. Chairman Scott is a strong voice for farmers, jobs, health care, our veterans, our children, and transportation. As chairman of the Agriculture Committee, Congress, Congressman Scott recognized the vital role of the vital role agriculture plays in the success of our country, and he fights to protect the interests of farmers, ranchers, and food processors. He also works to ensure that America's America's agricultural sector, sector continues to grow and remain global competitive. He also supports land grant universities, recognizes the significance they play in fostering research and education and improving the agricultural economy. Chairman Scott was born on a family farm in Ainer, South Carolina, and holds degrees from Florida A&M University and Walter School of Finance at the University of Pennsylvania. Scott is the son of a minister and a strong man of faith. David is married to Alfreda, Aaron, Scott. They have two adult children and two grandchildren. Also, on behalf of the Cotton Farmers of Georgia, I want to give my condolences on the loss of, of your close friend and brother-in-law, Hank Aaron. Congressman Scott's a great fellow. If you ever have the opportunity to meet him, I hope you get to him. When we get a chance to see him in D.C., his ears is always open, and he's, and he's always willing to help agriculture. Congressman Scott. It's you, right, Taylor, who is the, our head hunter on this? You're Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I am the head honcho from time to time. It's, <laughs> most, most days it's Chairman Davis. Um, but uh, uh, thank you so much for taking time from your schedule. Uh, we know you have a lot going on. And again, we're, we're very sorry for the loss of your close friend and brother-in-law, uh, Mr. Aaron. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And I appreciate it. Uh, as soon as I finish here, I'll be leaving to go to the church for the funeral. So uh, what a man, what a man. Um, so let me just start out by uh, saying how much I care, of course, about all of agriculture, but I always have that special little place in my heart for cotton. And some of you may know, but I grew up on a farm. My grandparents raised me on a farm and in Aner, rural Aner, South Carolina. And I picked that cotton. I cropped the tobacco, milked the cows, fed the hogs, plowed the fields. But you know, I had this incident with cotton because when I was young, I would look, go into the fields and I'd say, when are you gonna let me go in and pick that nice cotton, that soft cotton you find out? So finally they did. But what they didn't tell me is, son, be careful when you go in there because all that nice, soft, soft looking cotton is captured in these real stickly bulbs. So I went in there, boom, boom, oh. So it's sort of like milking the cow too. When I sat down there, and if you all have ever experienced that, you better know what you're doing when you sit down there and milk that cow. Uh, they will let you know. But farming is uh, part of my life, it's experience. And uh, I just thank God really for this blessing that he has uh, given me to be the chairman of our House Agriculture Committee. And I, I want to let you all know how much uh, I appreciate my good friend, Colin Peterson, because Colin took me under his arm when I came on. As a matter of fact, he reminded me the other day when 
he was writing his endorsement of, he said, David, I remember when you came on for several years, you were the only black person, black committee member on the ag committee. And uh, Colin and I uh, uh, were great friends, learned so much from him. And uh, it's because of his strong hand too that uh, I am now the chairman of the committee. So it's all been such a great experience uh, with all of the different uh, diverse groups in the caucus overwhelmingly really uh, came through. And, and that's how you can tell it's God's work to win it 144 uh, to I think uh, Jim had about 80. So it was overwhelming. And I mentioned to Hank also, this means so much to me because 44 was Hank Aaron's number. And he helped me from day one back when I first started. I share this with you. We had planned on the uh, night and the evening of my debut and kick out event for my political career for April the 8th, 1974. <laughs> you can imagine, right? And Hank was the star attraction for that. And it was on that night and all the people were at the house for the big fish fry. But he broke Babe Ruth's record and everybody thought he wouldn't show up. But just to show you the kind of man that Hank is and was, he came. It was about 2.45, 3, and people saw all these cars streaming down the street to the house. Car come in, Hank is coming, Hank is coming. But I mentioned that story because it tells you the kind of man that my brother-in-law Hank Aaron was, and is still, always will be, that on that night, when he broke Babe Ruth's record, he still came by, and people cherished that all the way to the day. So anyway, I appreciate you allowing me to give you some of the opening feelings we have on my outstanding brother-in-law, my wife's uh, brother. Let me talk for a moment, if I may, on why, uh, what we're doing and moving. I would like to just share with you where, why we're having and moving out very quickly on some very important hearings. First hearing, that we're gonna have is uh, will be on climate change. Now, this is so important because we in agriculture have got to get out and be at the point of the spear on this whole challenge with uh, climate change. Uh, is that, can you see who that is? Oh, Dania, how are you? Excuse me, y'all, that's my daughter just coming in. Um, climate change. And, 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 and this is because nobody, no entity, no industry is more impacted from weather and climate as our industry agriculture, it is essential that our industry get out front on this now. There are a lot of movements on climate change coming from different directions. I do not want to see it overwhelmed with the fight over Green New Deal or uh, uh, um, um, fuel issues, electric cars. I mean, all of that because agriculture depends totally on the climate, the water we get from heaven and the ground. 
those two elements, I often say miraculously, provides the food we eat, the water we drink, the clothes we wear, our shelter. These are the basic ingredients for our quality of life, for life. So we're gonna have the experts come in, the scientists, we're gonna have NASA. And you all may know, I don't know if you know or not, but NASA, our space program, has now found traces of water on the moon. Other things that they are discovering out there. We need to know about this. We need to know what is happening with this ultra frequency of hurricanes coming at us from the Southeast. They're all coming this way week after week. So many this year, we ran out of the alphabet to name them. And then we tried to use the Greek alphabet, ran out there. We got a problem. The fires that are burning, nobody, nobody is hurt. Nobody is um, benefits more or hurt more than our farmers when it comes to climate change. And that's why I want all of us to understand we've got to get what my good friend Richard Petty once told me, pole position. I asked him, I, we used to clean up the infield as students where I graduated from high school in Daytona Beach and I met Richard Petty and he gave me some good advice. I asked him in infield, I said, Mr. Petty, why you won more races than anybody? Uh, why, what should, how did you do that? He, and he said, son, because he called everybody son. He said, son, don't look at how many races I won. Look at the number of inside pole positions I won. I didn't know what he was talking about. Eventually, I did as I become a fan of NASCAR. And so my whole point here is, that we can't let any of these other folks who have their grand schemes on how to deal with the climate change get ahead of us, our livelihoods, the future of our food security, the basic things that our people depend upon to survive, depend on this, our farm. So that's why it's important for us to get out that's why I want you all, and I've said this to others in our cotton industry, to help us to make sure that we, as we address climate change, we do so in the best interest of cotton. To, because cotton industry is faced with so many different challenges now. And cotton is number two in my home state of Georgia. I have made it my business. Um, you can check with uh, Reese Langley. Um, some of you may not know of the hard work I have consistently put into cotton. I am cotton's huckleberry, we might say, when it comes to, we did the seed, cotton seed deal we had to do. And then the other thing I want to mention, we're also going to do a hearing on um, crop insurance. I was very uh, involved with trying to figure out, because as you know, you all in cotton weren't happy with the crop insurance over the years. We had to move to another entity that didn't work. And then we had cotton seed oil. We had all of these different dynamics. So I want you all to be a part of this hearing on a crop insurance. Now another one, we've, we've got to make sure that our wonderful world of agriculture is open to everybody, regardless of race, creed, or color. Now, we've had some discrimination charges that have 
developed. Um, and it's so important to all of us. But with the good Lord blessing me in so many ways, but paramount has been that I am also the very first African American to chair the Agriculture Committee. And I want you all to join with me in making sure that we root out any kind of discrimination for African American farmers. We want them to be as joyful and as a participant free of any racial discrimination. I need your help on that. And I know from working with you, you all will help us make sure of that. I've talked with my good friend, uh, Secretary Vilsack, and Vilsack's a good man, but there have been some charges made relative to the um, Department of Agriculture. We need to get those on the table, get them out. So for the first time in history, we're going to have black farmers come before the Agriculture Committee. Bill Sank will be there. We, we want everybody that can solve this problem there. And so help us in that, if you will. Now, we also got to deal with this food shortage. I, it breaks my heart. I don't know if you all know this or not, but the latest statistics point to where now there's 17 million of our children in America, in the United States, who are malnutrition. Millions of them going to bed hungry every night. No, that has to stop. So we're working with a group called Feeding America. Um, and one of the things I've been doing uh, and with this uh, COVID-19 is I have been doing in my own uh, district here in Georgia has been doing um, drive-through testing where we get folks coming in and get testing for the COVID-19. But I've also partnered with uh, our uh, Atlanta Community Food Bank, uh, Kyle Wade, who is the CEO. And uh, we've had several throughout our district, but I've learned so much. I had no idea how much hunger is really causing a big problem for us. So that's why I say the Lord allows things to happen to open our eyes. But folks, we got to really deal with this hunger situation in the United States and make sure we have food security. Now, I mentioned crop insurance, but we also, and this is dear to my heart, we are losing too many of our precious small town communities in rural America. That is, has to be one of our biggest priorities. And so you all can definitely help us there. Having grown up on the farm, there is, once we get that cotton, once we crop the tobacco, once we harvest, all of the various hundreds, thousands of different elements and products and vegetables, the whole nine yards and cotton is back of the commodities. They go to another step, manufacturing, and we're losing those jobs. And we're losing generations of younger people because we're not connected to our technology, to the internet, broadband. And we've got to just stop talking about it, but we need to move immediately and put financial resources in place to connect our rural communities now. 
And then we need you all. Uh, there's ginning, there's uh, processing. You all know the steps. Once that cotton is, is picked from the fields, it goes through various stages before it gets up here to our clothing. We got to try to figure out how we can give some tax incentives to some manufacturing and processing units who will keep those jobs in those communities. You know, and let me just say, you know, I'm almost in Aner, where I grew up. And if there's anybody on here who's from South Carolina, you probably know where Aner is. It's not just the country. They used to say, when you go to Aner, you're going past the country. But it was a joyful place, but it was near other rural communities like Marion and Mullins, Sumter, all these other towns. And we would, when we cropped the tobacco, it couldn't just stay there, but we were able to get it and go down the road to another rural community called Mullins, where they would sell and auction the tobacco. We put it on a mule and wagon, we go down there. Ainer, for example, used to have movie theaters, drugstore. We had the Horry County Fair there, one time the state fair, but all that is withering away in our communities. We've got to really bring our rural communities back alive. And that is a major issue that our agriculture is gonna be a part. And nobody can help us more than cotton because that's where cotton is produced. That's where it grows. That's where it comes out of the ground, our rural communities. So we're gonna bring that here and together. And I have a wonderful staff. And as I'm talking about these hearings, I do want you all to please contact Ann Simmons. Some of you may know Ann, but she is our outstanding director of our staff. And we have a wonderful staff that is putting these hearings together, the climate change, the black farmers, uh, helping with the hunger um, and the crop insurance, rural broadband. And then finally, but not least, disaster aid for our farmers. I can't tell you how frustrated I have been over the 18 years to see how laggardly, how uh, just, just terribly, how we in Congress have responded to getting disaster aid to our farmers. Many of you know, and I feel it, I know, I know how these, particularly our small family farms who put their life, their children's lives into that farm. And when the hurricanes are coming, when the tornadoes, when the fires are coming, when all of this, they need that financial help right then. And do you all know? that with the way we're doing it now through the regular appropriations process, it's been months and in some cases years. And still, even to this day, we've lost farms because we moved with uh, getting disaster aid down to them too late. And as a result of that, as many of you know, the suicide rate of so many of our farmers just escalated. I know we'll forget the meeting because uh, Colin was talking about it one day because he has uh, a lot of dairy as we all do. And it was so profound within the dairy farmers and they were saying at a point 
Another group we lost so many lives to with suicide were veterans. Many of you remember, we were losing at a point one per day, second to the veterans was farmers. So I, I, I'm going to pause for a moment here so you all can ask me questions. And if I can't give you the answer, that's why I got a great staff that's on standby so we can give you good answers. But I just want you to know how thrilled I am, how happy I am, and how much I'm looking forward to providing leadership as the chairman on this committee, but I can't do it without your help. And one final thing I wanna to say to you, the great legacy of why um, this is so important is because it's the way you get things done. Our agriculture committee over my 18 years of being here has had a legacy of being the foremost house committee of great bipartisan partnership. That is a legacy I am going to carry forward. Many of you know me over the 18 years and you've known many of the great things that I have done. One of the greatest things was our bipartisan bill to provide $80 million in scholarships to our 1890 land grant colleges and universities. I couldn't have done that without having great partners on my Republican side working together. And we have some re excellent Republican partners standing ready to work with us. And so we are in this together, Democrats and Republicans. That is the way we've done business. That is the way we're gonna do business under Congressman David Scott as chairman. And uh, our ranking member Thompson is a wonderful guy. We served together almost 18 years. I think he's been on about 14. But uh, I just want you all to know that this is going to be a very exciting and meaningful journey. And I appreciate you all being my partners in making it just extraordinarily successful. And now Reese, um, or not, not Reese, um, who's uh, still? Uh, Taylor Stills. Taylor Stills. Taylor, I turn it back over to you. And if there's any questions or anything else I can expound on, I'll be happy to do.